Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope that you have subscribed and that you enjoy watching these videos of Just Paint It. I'm gonna show you everything that I got at my thrift haul and I went three times in the last two weeks and got a number of really cool items, some that I'm gonna thrift and some that I'm just going to wash up and either keep for myself or resell. So I'll show you what I got and tell you what I paid for it. Is this white pan with the red handle is the enamel pan. It is definitely an old pan. I paid $2.99 for it and it does have staining on it on the sides. It has staining in the bottom. Perfect little planter for out on your patio for this summer. You probably don't want to plant right inside of this pot, but planting uh, in a pot and then putting the pot inside here would be perfect. So, or you can hang it on your wall in the kitchen, either one way or another. Take the sticker off, of course, and just hang it up. Or it could be a planter on your table as well. So. Definitely a cute little pot. I'm gonna clean that up. I'm not gonna do anything to it, and it's gonna stay as is. Same with these two. This is a black enamel coffee cup, and this is a blue enamel coffee cup. This one is new and a replica. This one, I believe, is old, vintage um, spotted enamel. It is grody. Look at the gunk on there. It's not even shiny. This one is too. I take it they came out of the same house and I take it they were stored in the kitchen where all that grease and gunk gets collected. And when you go to the thrift stores, people don't wash their stuff before they take it and the thrift stores don't wash it either. That's your job to do. So this, these were both 99 cents and uh, I think they would make a really good pot to put a sedum in. Here is a couple of bread pans. These are Bake King bread pans. And it says something else on them. King of Bakeware, I believe is what it says. So I didn't look them up yet, but I will be looking them up. I think that the patina on them is awesome and sticking a, you know, a jar in them. That jar doesn't fit. Sticking a vase inside there or a succulent can go inside. A succulent can go inside there and putting that on your t on your kitchen counter or your dining room table. I think it'd just be really sweet. I really, really do like kitchen um, items that have a really good patina to them. So these again are Bake King. I paid $1.99 each for them. So those are going to stay as is. I'm just going to clean them up and I will list them on my website. If you want anything, you can go to my website, thepaintedphotographerhomedecor.com and check out. They won't be on there right away because I'll have to thrift or I'll have to flip some of these thrift items before I list everything. I got two jars and this one is nice and tall. It's really, really clean. It's a really clean jar. It's got some kind of wave to it also. That's why I think it's pretty old because it is thick. It has no markings on it. It was 98 cents. I really do like a tall um, bud vase and I do like a bud vase for the summertime when I just want to bring in a single flower. I think it makes such a statement to have a single flower in your vase. So this was 98 cents. It'll get cleaned up and sold as is. This one is $1.39. This handle is extremely rusted. It's rusted so badly that it's broke right here, but it doesn't come off. It's still attached on there. And on this side, it's just that twisted metal, which is really rusty, which it's got some really good patina on it. I do like it. And it was $1.39. It also has, that is clean. It does not come off in there. So it was really abused somehow, probably stuck in someone's rock pile or something. And it's 
It's old. I like it. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a tin measuring cup. It was 59 cents. It needs a good wash job. Again, probably planting a succulent inside there. It does have the measuring ingredients or the measuring um, half cup, quarter cup, three quarters cup on there. So that is another planter idea. Here is a Pampered Chef bread tin. They used to put their bread in there and bake it, and then it'd come out in the shape of a flower. There's a cap on both sides. So what I do with these is, this one was 69 cents. So what I do with these is I leave the cap on one side and I take the cap off the other side and I paint it a really, really bold color like this one. And then I plant in it. So it's a nice tall pot for your patio in a really cool, bright color. Then the succulents, if you get one that kind of flows over, or even a flower, if it'll flow over and it'll start to fill up the sides of that bread tin. So these are my favorite. I really do like painting these up, and anytime I see them at the thrift store, I will purchase them. So you'll probably not see this on my website unless you message me and tell me or leave a comment below and tell me I should paint it and you'd plant it yourself because I don't believe I can, I can ship a plant. Here's a plate. It had a pear painted on it and it did not have a price on it. It is a wood plate, but this cloche fits perfectly on this plate. This cloche was $2.99. I put it on top of here. I wasn't even paying attention at the thrift store and they must have thought it was $2.99 for the two pieces and that's what they charged me for it. So it was $2.99 for the two pieces. This cloche has rhinestones that are on it right there. Really cool. And it is very thick. And uh, you can store whatever you want in there. So I'm going to protect that so I don't break it. I don't want to break it. A couple of totes. This one is a Christmas one. They stuck it out anyway, even though it wasn't Christmas. And it's got a nice shape to it, a handle. It's got some grody cat hair in it. It's also got tape that's on here. Um, it was $3.99, so a little bit pricey, but I do like my tote boxes. I do think that they're really versatile, and I do like to paint them up and see what I can do next with them. Here is a plasticky wicker basket. It's got a hole on one side. I was thinking of doing a reclaimed wood board and then putting a hook or something on the back side, and then this basket would hang on there and it could hold some flowers. The basket will obviously get some paint on it. And this basket was $1.99. And I think I told you that this tote was $3.99. Couple of good deals right there. Next. I have, this is for my husband. He is a Bugs Bunny fan. It was 59 cents for this white, oh, there's a succulent in there, for this white um, enamel cup with the red ring, but it does have Bugs Bunny on it. And it was 59 cents. And uh, he's just super cute. So I bought it for my husband. So this will not be for sale. I'm sure it'll be sitting out on the patio with a plant in it. I can almost bet. Unless he doesn't let me plant it, then it won't be. Here's a basket. This is wood. And the handle is metal and it has some ornate features on the side of it. It's really grody. It's got some nice cat hair in there. And then it's got the little whoop de whoop on the side. This will probably get a nice whitewash to it and another good spot for a plant or something or you can just put it in your house and maybe put some lavender in it 
and this will also get painted and put up on my website. A couple of baskets. What did I do with my lavender? Oh, there it is. A couple of baskets. When I bought this one, all I could think about was it would look really cute with some lavender in it, and obviously it does. This basket will get a paint job. This basket was 29 cents, and this is a really, really good basket for 29 cents. It's very sturdy. I don't like flimsy old baskets, so I'm allergic to cats. As soon as I touch those cat hair baskets, I go crazy. Okay, these baskets, 69 cents. These, I was thinking, I'm not a basket person. A lot of people are. I don't pick them up when I see them, but these were a really good deal. And I also have to get ready for, <coughs> cats are getting to me. Um, I have to get ready for a succulent sale with my granddaughters and my nieces and my great nieces. So I needed some containers. So if they get painted up, they might just be used for my craft day with my family. <coughs> but see, they would look really cute with some succulents in them. That's my thought. I found twin Crocs, it's twin day, both on opposite sides of the store, twin Crocs, twin prices of $1.99. So they do have the rubber snubber in them and they're a really good shape. There's no chips, the handles are there. They're that nice brown Croc look. Here's a wood tote. Some nice chunky wood tote. This will get like an IOD mold or stamps or something on here. It'll get a paint job. $2.99 was this price. $2.99. That's a good deal because wood is really expensive right now. Okay, this garden girl. She was sitting out in somebody's garden and uh, she's even complete with spider nest eggs back here. Ugh. And her, she's holding her dress and her dress holds flowers. Like, you can put, <laughs> maybe not. You can put flowers in her dress, fake flowers. Pretend that's in there and or you can just let it fill up with water when it's out on your patio this is definitely an outdoor statue and um she's really cute she's going to get cleaned up and get a nice paint job because i think she deserves one then i have candlestick holders you know i love my candlesticks so there were two of them the shorter one is $1.99 and the taller one is $2.99. They're this gray leopard spot rash kind of look to them. Definitely don't like that. They will get a paint job. They're a resin type material and they will get sold on the website. They are chunky. I love me some chunky candlesticks. All right, I got two more items. We buzzed through that haul really quickly. Here's two more items. These are a couple of lamps that I found. I didn't buy them right away. I researched them online and I went to, back to the store and I picked them up. So these are vintage cherub lamps and they're little, I'll have to hold one up. They're sweet little faces but he is taking her dress off her shoulder there and he is naked he's got his little bum sticking out on the back side so I went and I looked up these vintage lamps and they're worth quite a bit of money so I went back and I picked them up and I'll put them on my website <coughs> but I can see these in somebody's beach house can't you see these in somebody's beach house I will not paint them. They are sweet just the way they are. She's got a little belly button right there in her little dress. 
They are sweet as can be and I will not paint them. So follow along and you'll see all this stuff painted up. Hi, got all my painting done and I'm on my lunch updating my YouTube video. So sitting by the river, enjoying this beautiful day. And I hope that you learned something and please leave a comment. If you're new here, please subscribe. If you need any DIY or IOD products, head on over to thepainterphotographer.com and I will ship them right to your door. There is a link below. I forgot to tell you, any of these home products that you want, it's at thepainterphotographerhomedecor.com and you can uh, scoop up any of these items that I thrifted and I refurbished. So head on over there, there's a link below. The first thing I chose was this basket with some aviary DIY paint and I just painted the entire thing with the aviary, which is a fantastic green. Next, I chose this other basket, which had a little bit of um, color on it already. I have the Walmart brand of wax. It's a liquidy type wax. And I put that into a little cup. And then I mixed the DIY Old 57 with that wax. And this is going to make a colored wax. If you haven't ever tried that before, this is a fun wax to do that with. So add a little bit of paint into that Walmart brand um, clear wax and give it a little stir. This wax is very liquidy and you're just gonna brush it on and don't worry about it being too thick because we're going to wipe it back off with a baby wipe. So get that wax on with a just a regular brush. Don't use a nice brush. Use a old brush that you might have. So get a good clear coat on there. and wipe some of that wax back off, leaving most of it just in the creases. So this basket already had that type of a look, so I just enhanced it a bit. I also added that same wax to the metal handle and wiped that back as well. It works good on all mediums, wood, metal, plastic, whatever you have. Next up are these little baskets. I did one in Queen Bee with a little liquid sunshine for brightness and I added, I didn't make sure that it was full coverage. I just got a good coverage of Queen Bee on the basket and then added a little bit of liquid sunshine for that brightness.
next basket I went in with aviary and did the same thing this one I did not enhance with a different color I just went with straight up aviary Okay, Old 57, you know that's my favorite color. And you also know that these Pampered Chef bread tubes are also one of my favorite things to paint. So I added that Old 57 onto the bottom of the can and gave it a nice good coat. I did add a second coat to make sure that it was coated thoroughly. The aviary basket was completely dry, so I'm adding the DIY white wax. DIY white wax over the aviary is gorgeous color. You have to try it. After you get it all on there, I took another brush and just kind of worked it into the basket a little bit more. Wicker is very forgiving and got it inside those crevices as best I could. And then I took a dry cloth and wiped the outside, bringing back some of that aviary color. The baskets are becoming a big deal for me. I really like them. The next aviary basket, I took the black wax and added it onto the yellow one and the aviary. So at the end, you'll be able to see the difference with the same aviary paint and the difference that the colored waxes make to it. This yellow one, I went in with the black wax to give it more depth and I really like it. Here is the difference aviary with white wax and black wax. I have these two candlesticks. 
and we're gonna paint them. We painted them with the spray paint, a black spray paint. So what's underneath here is not gonna come back up. So now I think I'm gonna go in with Aviary from DIY and give them a green. What do you think? Green? Let's go for it. So first I turn it over and I get everything on the bottom side, everything that I probably would miss if I painted it from the top. It doesn't take long at all to paint these candlesticks and I only did a single coat. The aviary is a really nice coverage and painting them with the black spray paint first really helped because we're going to distress them. So if we have some spots that are coming through with the black, that's okay because it's going to help when we distress. Next up, that plate. I had also spray painted that black and now I'm just giving it a coat of white beadboard on the back side. And for the white, I did use two coats. The coverage was not as good over black paint as the aviary. So that did get two coats, so make sure that it's dry in between. All right, here's this basket. It's not painted yet, and I'm gonna go in and give it a coat of aviary. It's kind of like a plastic wicker, so it has a little bit of a different look to it than the wicker ones, but this one is got a, light, a lot tighter weave, and I thought a, um, apothecary would be perfect. Okay, here's the tote, painted in apothecary. And this one I'm going to distress back down to the wood and I'm also gonna put some flowers on here. And you'll see that in the end that I painted flowers. I didn't show you how I did it. 
I'm painting right over this design because it's not raised. And I will show you in another quick video how I painted those flowers. This little garden girl was painted in Old 57 DIY and I'm going to take the DIY shipwreck wax and I'm going to go all over her giving her like a seaside shipwrecked look. I go in with a, just a chippy brush and you're going to go over the entire thing. I work in sections and when I get a section done, I go ahead with a dry cloth and I wipe it back, leaving that shipwreck wax in the creases. Back to our candlesticks. You take a baby wipe and with the DIY paint, it'll distress with water. So just distress that green paint black to the black spray paint. Same with the apothecary on that. DIY works perfect for wet distressing. I have this wood box. I didn't show you how I painted it because it's how I paint everything else. This is the DIY tarnished pearl, which is a really pretty white color. And we're going to farmhouse this box up. So I'm going to add a bunch of layers to these edges. And the first thing that I'm going to do is take my IOD distressed stamp. And I'm going to distress with stone gray. And you can see right through this stamp as to where you're going to see what you're going to see on there. So you can kind of figure out where you want. Like, I don't want a whole lot of distressing on there. So I'm going to go about right here where there's not so much detail. I have my stone gray. I write on my the backs of my ink pads so that I know which one they are. And I'm going to just lightly touch so it gives it a distressed look. That's our first layer. I'm going to do this again. Has a little bit more distress on it. And 
need to ink just a little bit more. I'm gonna go right here. You don't wanna shift it. You wanna make sure that it's not shifting at all. This is not sealed. The paint is raw. It needs to have a raw finish so that that ink has something to absorb it into. All right, so there's our first layer on that wood box. And we can take this and just what leftover ink we have on it, go ahead and distress that top edge. If there is any leftover ink. All right, so there's that top edge. The ink is really dry. We didn't get some of the edges, which is fine. We didn't get some areas. And you want to make sure, this is a tip for you, you want to make sure that you store your ink pads upside down so the ink can fall this way into the outside of your pad versus if you store it this way, the ink will because of gravity, the ink will sink that way. So you want the ink to sink this way, okay? Store them upside down. Next thing I'm gonna do is I have, this is going to be a crockery stamp on here, but I wanna put some, just some fun little grain sack stencils on there as well. So I'm going to use Gravel Road, DIY's Gravel Road. And I'm gonna offload. I'm gonna offload most of my paint and just hold it on there. It's gonna be very subtle. That's why it's called layering, because it's very, very subtle. You don't have to hit the whole stencil. This is a JRV stencil, so you're gonna see that's just on there. It's very, very light. And now we're gonna go with another stencil on here. Offloading my brush. There we go. Now we're gonna do that throughout the whole thing. I really do like this one with the A in it. I don't know why. On these edges, there's not gonna be a crockery stamp, so you can be just a little bit more defined with your JRV stencil. Okay. We'll get a different one for this side. I do not sell the JRV stencils, so you can find a retailer near you or where I sell my DIY paint and my IOD products, that store is a JRV retailer. So if you're local to me, you can pick them up right at the same spot. We're gonna do this Bemis right here. You gotta hold it down with one hand and stencil with the other. Right there. Okay, we got one more edge to do. We're gonna go in with this wheat stamp stencil sorry stencil so you're offloading this is a jrv stencil brush you're offloading you've got a very very little bit of paint on here holding it down with one hand stenciling with the other 
making sure that when you move, you don't pick the stencil up. And I'm staying very light. I want those stencils to be extremely light because that's not the main focus. That's just an added layer. So that was Gravel Road. All right, now we're gonna add, we have the crockery stamp set from IOD. And I also have a thin mount that I cut into four pieces. And then I'm putting my crockery stamp on this thin mount using the grid lines to make sure that it's straight. So I'm lining it up on the grid to make sure that it's straight. Then I go and I grab my black ink pad and I ink this up with black. This one's nice and juicy. This is this is the grand the grand poobah. And you, with the grid lines, you can line this up and make sure that it's centered, holding it with one hand at all times so you don't shift, moving your fingers around the stamp, getting that entire imprint. And I usually leave it sit for a little bit so that the ink absorbs into the paint and then I peel it right off. So there we are with one crockery. And just because we can, we're gonna go with another one on the other side. So let's see if this one fits. Gotta make sure you put it down there the right way. So yep, this one fits. You can set it on there straight, then take your thin mount. And pick it up. Set it down, commit, don't shift it, let it sit for a little bit. And then pick it up. That's my favorite one. So here we have a very farmhouse box. We're not done yet. So I'll be right back to show you what I do next. Now that was a little all too new and pretty for me. So I took a sandpaper and I sanded over the top just to distress that brand new look up. Most everything is gonna get a coat of Big Top and I recorded this the wrong way on my phone, so sorry about the small little window.
I also gave this basket with Apothecary a coat of shipwrecked wax as well. And then I went in with Pennies from Heaven, just kind of on the top, gave it a, a tarnished look. Same with the little garden statue. She got Pennies from Heaven also. They also got one more layer of black wax. So I needed them to look a little bit on the tarnished side. So I put black wax on the basket and on the little girl. There we have it. That's it for my video that I have for you this week for the Just Paint It series. I hope that you enjoyed it. It's a little bit on the long side and I did a little bit less editing, but it's done and you get to see what I have. If you're interested in any of these products, please head on over to the Painted Photographer Home Decor.com. The link will be below and you can purchase any of these items. Also, if you want any DIY paint or IOD products, you can head to thepaintedphotographer.com and pick them up and I'll ship them right to your door. And as always, thank you for watching. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. And until next time, happy painting.